Let's take a look at this camera monitor, the Feel World FW760. Stay tuned. At 179 bucks, the Feel World FW760 is an amazing low cost monitor, offering options quite a few features found in many higher end monitors. First impressions are best, and I appreciate any gear that includes some sort of protective bag or case. The kit includes the FW76 monitor, user manual, all the various cabling you'll need, battery recharger, Sony battery, a cold shoe mount, a sunscreen, which every monitor needs, and a few little tools. The screen is seven inches, my preference, displaying a full 1920 by 1080 image. Let's take a look at some of its features. It includes all the goodies, focus peaking, zebras, histograms, image flip, frame lines, markers, safe zones, anamorphic de-squeeze, false color, and zebras, to name a few. If these terms are new to you, I highly suggest you check out my monitors course over at Basic Filmmaker University, which will cover everything you need to know before making a monitor buying decision. Let's first just go over the exterior housing and the build quality. It's, uh, it is plastic. Most monitors are made out of plastic. It has this bezel here, which is interesting. It comes around here. This comes off quite easily. It snaps off, but it's held firmly in place. It has a little embedded Velcro strip here for the hood, which I'll show in a moment. The knobs are quite accessible, which I really like. You have your mode button uh, for HDMI or AV, depending on what your input is. Your menus, which are controlled by your left, right, up, and down. And we'll show those also in a minute. What I really like about this is I like the function one, two, three, four sitting on the front here. Usually they're embedded or they have little switches and things like that. On this unit, for instance, if F1 is set up for um, zebras, if F2 is set up for zoom, if F2 is set up for focus peaking, et cetera, the nice thing about it is you're just sitting there with the monitor and you just press the button and it's instantaneously on and off, which again, I'll show you in a minute, um, and a power on off button which is great. It's just a single press and the unit will power on for you. Feel world. Um, the blue screen makes basically because I have no HDMI connected to it at this point. On the back you have this, I love this. It's a tiny turn knob with a sliding um, bracket. What happens is when you plug your HDMI cable in here, you just slide this out, plug your HDMI cable in to the unit, and then this collapses back right here on the cord, and it keeps the HDMI cable from coming out or coming loose, which is really great. Um, on the side here, you have these various inputs. They're all on one side, which I like. What we have is a uh, USB, this is for upgrades. If the firmware needs to be upgraded or um, they make updates, you just plug into this mini USB right here. This is an OSD controller, which I'll go into a minute. Uh, this is a headphone jack, which I really appreciate because some cameras don't have a headphone jack, which I don't understand when they have audio coming out of their cameras. This effectively adds a headphone jack to your camera. Next is an AV input in case you're running uh, something other than HDMI. And then of course your HDMI input. They have uh, one battery jack here, which for a monitor of this price, that's pretty good. Um, I'd prefer two battery jacks, but <laughs> again, that's just more cost. Battery life is about two hours, and although that doesn't seem like a lot, that's easily solved by using a beefier battery like these Sony 970s. One battery is gonna be fine for you. The thing that really clinches it is the fact that over here, they have a 12 volt DC adapter. I really like having adapters for all my equipment. When I'm out on the road, and I'm filming 
remotely where there's no power. Sure, I want batteries, and I'd probably power this with a higher end battery than this. Um, but when I'm in a studio like this, I want AC, so I don't have to worry about it. If you think about, I have three lights, I have a camera, I have a uh, Zoom H6, uh, I have the monitor, um, and I have various things going around. That's a lot of batteries to worry about. Having an AC adapter, I can just, I'm done, I'm going. The battery itself, right here, you'll notice that it has a little locking mechanism. So when the battery goes in, it locks in. And the way you get the battery out is you have to press this button and then remove the battery. That's also a great thing. When you're, <laughs> you can take these monitors and sometimes you'll flip them up upside down or you'll have them in various areas for a steady cam or something like that. And having it lock in means you don't have to worry about the batteries falling out, which is a great feature that not all monitors have, especially at this price point. The other thing I like, I'm not sure if you can see it here, you'll see it in the pictures when I show you what's on there, is I love having the battery indicator sitting right up here. That right now says 100%. I was using this the other day and I can instantaneously see what the percentage of the battery is. It's not intrusive on the image. And uh, I saw it was like a 10 or 5%, I think it was. And that's really nice because if I am sitting there off of battery power, <laughs> I'm forewarned. I don't have to have, I don't have to notice a little blinking light or something's going on or, uh, or like on my uh, camera over there where all of a sudden it starts blinking and it just shuts off. I can instantaneously see what's going on here. Although this is mounted on top of a camera with the included shoe mount, I usually mount these on top of a cage, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Usually the camera would be pointing the other way, the monitor would be pointing this way and you'd be viewing what's going on. Uh, having it in a cage allows it to be more stable and it doesn't bounce around like, like this will. Let's turn around and take a look at this bezel here for a moment. As I said, there's this Velcro and it's embedded, it's not cheap, this Velcro piece up here um, for the hood. Let me put the hood on and show you what that's like. This hood simply unfolds. It's, I don't know what this is made out of, some sort of plastic. The inside is very soft, but basically what you do is you just drop this over the top like that. And it's on there, it's not gonna fall off. So now you've got a sun hood, which is really great. I would use it even in the studio because you have a bunch of lights, like I have a light sitting over there. You have a bunch of lights sitting over there and they can really, like that, they can really get in your way. Um, and if I'm looking at the view like this with the sun hood on, I don't have to worry about reflections and lights and everything else. The monitor itself, the view, and how well it works, I'm gonna show you in just a second. Um, it's very high quality and I like it. One thing I did wanna point out about this unit that is pretty amazing to me, this side, the bezel itself, and the unit is, it's as thin, thin as my forefinger, if not a little thinner, which is quite amazing. It's really thin and light, 17 millimeters and weighs 9.5 ounces. All right, now I've darkened things pretty much here so you can actually see the image. I hope that's coming through well. Um, I have my doll over there and I'm kind of trying to trick the monitor in that I have quite a bit going on in the background, all these different colors. I have the doll. Uh, I want to see, there's a put a little <laughs> dust up here stuff like that because I can see and I want to see if this will actually catch this, uh, the skin tones off this little lady here. And there's a lot of different colors and things going on here, which is why I'm using that. But I wanted to show you some of the things about these instant buttons. If I just pop this button here, it allows me to check fields. There's gray, I can use this gray. It's a good way using gray to check your exposure up front what's happening, how the highlights look, etc. cetera. Um, cool thing, you can check your reds. 
you can check your greens, which is really cool. If you're shooting on a green screen and you turn on the uh, green channel, you'll be able to see using your exposure on your camera and stuff, different hot spots, things like that. I really like that a lot. And then of course you can go through and also check your blues, which obviously there's not a lot of. Let's turn that off. The next function, and these are the default functions. Now we have the focused assist on. Uh, wow, she looks really creepy. So let's see how you use this. What happens is if I pull this this way out of focus, you'll notice no little lines. Let's pull it back this way. Notice little lines. Now watch as I focus in on this thing on her face. You'll see different areas. Uh, they get this red little highlighty thing and that's telling you whether or not it's in focus or not. So what I would want to do is I'd want to come in and just really nail those eyeballs right about there until she's creepy looking. You can change all this and the color of the focus and how it looks and everything else. That's the focus assist, which is great to have on a monitor. We'll turn that off. Uh, this is just a histogram. You can turn the histogram off. This is telling me it's a little bit to the left as far as um, how I've exposed it, which is fine. For this shot, I'm using my eyeballs. Let's turn that back off. Then we have this, which confuses a hell of a lot of people. Obviously, you can go over and learn all about this in my uh, monitors course. Um, but basically what happens is you set something up and it tells you, for instance, the yellow and the pinky areas are trying to determine skin tone. Like what's the color of the skin tone? I really like that it has this little meter over here on the right that tells you what you're looking at. You want in the pinky gray area on the skin tones, that's kind of what you want your colors to. This is nice for if you want to set up your white balance, which unfortunately I did not do for this camera. Um, and it shows you, this is okay. It shows you that the skin tones around here are okay. It also shows you where things are a bit over or underexposed, which is really nice. Let's get out of there and turn that back off. False colors off. The menu system, it's quite simple. Uh, these are all the different, you can set everything in this thing. These are the different uh, modes that you can use. You can set your color temperatures between this and others. Um, the next one is, of course, your language, your aspect ratio. Uh, what happens when you get no blue screen and all the on-screen controls? Uh, the next one is all your tools. There's a ton of stuff on here. You can turn on safe frames. You can freeze the image. Um, you can have your histogram on and off the whole time if you want to. False color, anamorphic view, uh, focus assisting, peaking colors, uh, turn over exposure on or off, um, what the exposure level is for, uh, that's basically the IRE, that's what am I going to use? Am I going to use face type things, etc.? Anyway, there is just a ton of features in this, including the grid. Um, the next one, we have uh, uh, focus assisting, histogram, false colors, etc. The F is for the functions. So I could go through and instead of check field focus assist histogram, let's go down to our histogram. And let's turn our function three, instead of histogram, let's turn that um, into overexposure. Menu back, now I'm set to overexposure. Let's turn the menu off. So now when I press F3, what that's showing me is it's gonna show me, it's zebras really, it's gonna show me what's overexposed here on this shot. Uh, for instance, if I start messing around with, there I, I've set the, uh, the shutter speed to 125. Nothing's going on here. We just keep clicking. I set it to 50. That's about right. 
Here I've set it. It's showing me that these areas here, which are zebra, that's why they call them zebra stripes. They call it overexposure on here. It's showing me that these are a bit overexposed, which is understandable because um, her face is really white and there's a lot of light on there. I actually would probably wanna see something like that um, on the overexposure. So let's go back to our 50 here. Let's change the ISO a bit. Let's bump it up to 800. Oh, look at that. That's really overexposed. Um, but that's about right. If you'll notice, there's not a lot of stuff happening on the overexposure here. There's not a lot of zebras here. That's about right. With her white face, I would probably, yeah, I would probably take that. Let's turn it off. Looks quite bright. Um, I always trust my eyeballs. My eyeballs tell me that looks good. Yeah, I mean, I don't see, there's just a little bit on the cheeks and, and that's what you would expect. Just a tiny bit on the cheeks or something where the highlights are, not the greatest model ever because her face is really white, but you get the idea. Lastly, you have uh, this power button, which is kind of cool. It, it, it basically, when it's hooked up, um, uh, let me just show you, it goes into a standby mode and uh, that's good to know because it tells you that there's battery and power to the unit. And when you turn the unit on, it connects up, it gives you the screen, you know everything's good. And looks for the HDMI single, voila. Now the other thing I've noticed on some monitors, um, this is a common thing to most monitors. Let's go over here and watch this. So there's a little bit of a lag between my hand showing up. That's normal. Uh, you'll see that on, <laughs> on almost every monitor. I know this was a problem on Aperture monos, monitors and they did a firmware update to help that. Um, that's, that's just a normal thing. Okay, a couple interesting things I wanna show you on this menu, for instance, the picture mode, there's a standard mode. Let's take a look at what that does. Here's a standard mode. There's a mild mode. And there's also a user mode, which you can set things up, and a dynamic mode. This tends to brighten the image up, mess with the colors. What we could do is get this monitor to record something on it and then compare that to what you're actually seeing on the monitor. If you're looking at your computer and what you're seeing and everything's calibrated correctly, and then you sit here and you uh, make sure you calibrate this, that means your eyes are seeing what the computer sees and that's just great. Uh, it's quite dramatic. You wouldn't really wanna enhance all the colors on here normally. So let's turn that off. There's the standard. Now you're gonna think, oh my. Now it's not as enhanced. Sure, um, that's what you want. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you that. Let's record a little footage here of this uh, lady and uh, see what we get from this picture that we're shooting over there. There's a lot going on. We have lights, we have a camera, we have white balances and everything else, but let's uh, see what a recorded picture of this lady looks like. Now, another thing you may be wondering is, well, you have all this room on the monitor and it's kind of squished down. That's not a bad thing. It's uh, various controls and things like that to set to see what you're actually seeing because some cameras do, like for instance, this camera delivers a different output. You can handle this in the monitor. You come over here and you go to these tools and you flip down here to the camera mode, for instance, if I flip the camera mode, here we're flipping to 1080i, and voila, we have a full screen image sitting there, 1080 at 60 hertz. Now when I use all my controls, check fields, they work well. Here's my zebras again. Here's my focus assist again. And there's my colors again. Looks like we got a better color range there. Anyway, 
I don't want you getting something like this monitor. Many monitors contain this. Getting something like this monitor and wondering why the screen's little or things don't match up. These monitors have many built-in controls that allow you to set for different cameras what signal's coming in so you get what you want. It's better if you take what I've shown you, if you're interested, and then go check out the specs. Go to the Feel World site with a link below in the description and check out what are the specs, what does it do, what doesn't it do. I mean, many of these monitors, they pretty much do everything. You're gonna be looking at build quality and price and what you can do. Again, you may wanna check out my uh, monitors course over at Basic Filmmaker University. It will explain to you just about everything to look for in a monitor. You can take the course, uh, then compare it to this monitor or any other monitor you feel you need, and uh, then you'll be knowledgeable and be able to uh, purchase a monitor that is for your needs. Remember, you're purchasing these for your needs. If you want this 4K monitor, to later, because you're gonna to upgrade to 4K and you don't have 4K right now, well, that's a smart buying decision. Uh, you don't wanna buy a monitor that doesn't handle 4K. Come in later, upgrade your stuff to 4K, and then all of a sudden you have to go buy a monitor. So it's a smart investment. All in all, I think this monitor is a good buy and in a good price range for most watching this channel. I've included links in the description below. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Sure, just end the episode, just leave me sitting here, just, you know, walk away, and, and you know, I, you don't pay me, you don't feed me, although I don't have a mouth to eat with, but, you know, a little consideration to a fine-looking lady would be nice, you know what I'm saying?